I was asked to do a tutorial about an object, a three-dimensional object moving through three-dimensional space. So the first thing I want you to know about this animation is that every layer of the landscape, the background, middle ground, foreground, extreme foreground, each one has to be a different layer. And the cars, I actually had to make four different cars. So I drew the cars from background to foreground all in different directions, depending on the angle that the road was going in. And some of the cars overlapped each other, so I had to redraw them so that there was no overlapping. So the ones where part of them are hidden, I had to draw an additional picture. <clears throat> I just traced it through and added the parts that were hidden by the overlapping. So I actually have a trick for drawing things like three-dimensional objects like cars and such if you're going to draw something like that you have to envision the box that it came in so if you'll notice the first several drawings that i make are extremely boxy they almost look like they're pieces of wood with just very hard planes no curves because i'm just trying to get a handle on the way the form looks in space without worrying about any of the details and as I continue to sketch and draw and turn the car in different directions, I gradually start adding more detail. So my second wave of drawings is very sort of scribbly as I focus on the details. And the, the next wave of drawings sort of tries to combine that boxy look, the, the sense of volume, where the sides are, where the top is, and the and the details together. And I, it, it, like, it doesn't look right to me, so I just keep making more drawings. I don't sit there and get upset and start erasing and say, oh, I messed up. I say, well, I need more practice. So I do a whole fresh new batch of drawings until I get to a sequence of drawings where I begin to feel happy with the end result. Now, the other thing I started to realize is that I didn't really like the way the road was going because I wanted it to switch back and forth. And this road, even though it goes from background to foreground, it's always going in the same direction. I wanted to make it go back and forth so I could get the sense of the, the three-dimensional object turning and I could get another side of it. So my drawings start to get a little bit better and then I start realizing that what's... Um, what's missing is a more interesting landscape. So I actually flipped the landscape over and created a brand new one where the road switched back and forth in four layers of space, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. And then I began a fresh new series of cars. In this case, I used a pencil and I focused on the planes, the sides, the top, and then added the detail on top of that, which is a lot easier to do, obviously, with pencil. The reason why my first several cars were not done in pencil is because I didn't want to get too hung up with erasing and making each car perfect. So now that I've done the cars three or four times, now I really do want to make them perfect. So drawing them in pencil first only makes sense. And then when I outline in pen, instead of outlining every single line, I'll just outline the, the lines that I want to keep, but I'll have a, by the time I got to this point, I had a pretty good idea of how to draw the cars. It felt easy to me, and I was happy with the results, whereas the very first cars I draw were very blocky and wooden looking, and I just didn't like the feel of them. This has a nice sort of cartoony feel. So once I got to this point, I went over and I inked in all the lines. And once I'd inked in all the lines, I went and I did the second car back and the third car back. I had to trace it onto another piece of paper and add the hood because of the overlapping and the fact that part of them were hidden. So there, the two cars in the middle, I actually had to redraw again. And I'll show you that. And then once I had a clear picture of all four cars and the hills that they were traveling along, I used an app, a free app called Adobe Scan, and that makes uh, PDFs of the images. The reason why I like Adobe Scan is you get a very pure black and white image. Um, you don't get a lot of stray marks. It doesn't pick up a lot of the smudges and stuff from the pencil lines. Um, if you want to take a photograph of 
it and just use the photograph. You're going to have to adjust from the exposure and use a black and white filter because what you really need is a, a clean black line drawing. And if you look back on my original animation, it wasn't that clean. There were a lot of little stray marks and stuff that were distracting. I didn't do as clean a job cutting it out as I should have. Um, part of the reason is that instead of using what I would normally use, which is Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Animate, a Wacom drawing tablet, um, a stylus, I wanted to uh, replicate the workflow that my at-home students were using. My students are home with Chromebooks and cell phones and maybe a Sharpie and a piece of paper. So they really don't have any of the fancy equipment or materials, so I deliberately chose not to use any of that fancy equipment and materials. So let me show you what the finished inked in drawing looks like. And then um, the ad in addition, I added, in addition to that, I added in two extra drawings for the middle car and the next car back um, where you know, to make up for the fact that the overlapping, that the part of the hood was obscured. So then I took a photo of them with my phone using the Adobe Scan app, and I then put that PDF into my Google Drive. So now I'm going into Google right now, I'm opening up the PDF, I'm downloading it to my Chromebook, and then I'm going to open it up in an app called Photopia. And you're going to see, because it's a PDF, the, it's trying to look for text in, in it. It actually thinks it's a text document. So I have to go to each page. There's four pages there. And where the layer menu is on the right, I'm changing each page to a smart object so that at least it knows that it's an image and not a text file. And then I'm going to go to each layer, right-click, and rasterize it, which is going to turn it into a a pixel-based um, image. So once it's rasterized, I'm just co copying and pasting each page into a new document. Um, so this is page one. It's a new document. Um, I changed the DPI to 300, so it'd be high res. And the reason why I changed the DPI, the, um, the pixels per inch, is I'm going to make the image later. I'm going to make it very, very small because I'm going to be animating it using the Wick Editor. And because it's going to be small later on, if I don't make it high resolution now, um, it's going to pixelate. It's going to, it, it's going to be this tiny little file, and if I try and change the size, it's going to lose all the detail. So making, um, making my images higher resolution now... Uh, before I shrink them down is just good sound practice so I don't lose any of the detail I worked so hard to get. So now I have the cars and the landscape each in their own file and they're now their um, Photoshop file so I can manipulate them, play around with them because they're... So I'm trying to... Uh, they're pixel-based. Now I'm trying to erase around... Um, each car needs to be in its own layer. Okay, so I'm actually erasing around that first car, getting rid of everything else except that first car. And because that last car was unobscured, there wasn't anything covering over it, I'll leave that in the picture for now too. So right now I'm just erasing, but later on I'm going to use the magic wand and pull out all the little background pieces. Um, and when they're gone... Um, and I'm going to now rotate the, um, rotate the file and I'm going to start on the next bunch of cars. So, um, I'm going to ultimately when I'm done, I'm going to have four separate cars in, f wait, actually four or five. I can't remember. I think four separate cars in four separate layers. And I actually ended up with the landscape, the the um the mountains that they, the mountain road that they were driving on ended up also having like five different layers so i actually ended up messing around with that too to create a five layer document um which i'll show you in a minute right now i'm just going out of my way to erase as much as possible from the backgrounds of the of the cars now i'm going in and doing the 
I'm going to rotate the landscape and I'm going to start coloring it. So I just selected different areas. I used gradients. Um, I tried to clean it up a little bit, um, get rid of the some of the specks in the background from where the pen bled through onto the paper. I didn't do a very good job of that, unfortunately. If I were trying to create a more professional video, I would have cleaned up that document better or even redrawn it with cleaner lines. It had a lot of little spots on top of it from the marker bleeding through onto the paper. So that's something you need to watch out for because I was drawing the cars on top of the, you see those spots? Yeah, I was drawing the cars on top of the landscape so I could orient them correctly. And unfortunately with Sharpies, it bleeds through to the next paper. So Let's see. So I'm just showing you how I, I saved the files. Each layer I exported as a PNG. So you just do layer. Um, I mean, you do um, image. Uh, let's see. File, export, layers. And you export all the different layers as a port portable network graphics. Um, so... One of the things I forgot to do here, unfortunately, was I forgot to resize them. So I'm putting all the cars together in a layered document, and I'm going to resize the entire document to, I think I ended up, it ended up being like only about two inches tall. Um, you could probably make it about four inches tall, but um, the idea is you get all the cars in the in the composition, in relation to each other from small to big, as if they're going down the road, and then you export the layers as PNGs, but you have to resize it first. You have a, a document that's probably about, I don't know, like 20 inches wide at this point, so you don't want something huge that you then have to resize in um, in the WIC editor. So I think I made the entire height of the document about about two inches. So I'm trying to organize where the cars go in this layered document. And then the next step is I'm going to color the background and I'm going to create a layered document of the background, of just the, the landscape. So here I am organizing the cars, getting them the right size in relation to each other. And then I'm going to do um, file export layers. And I'll export the layers as portable network graphics. So here I am playing around with the with the cars, with the different layers, getting it to look the way I want it to look in my final animation. Um, this was very time consuming. Um, and I notice I'm renaming all the layers, like front car, second car, third car, last car, because otherwise, when I get into the WIC editor, I'm not going to know which car goes where. I'm not going to remember which one is which. So uh, la labeling your layers um, will help you in the workflow when you take these um, PNGs and put them in a different doc um, program. So once I have all my cars in place at the angle I want and the size I want, I'm going to, and then I rename the, make sure that the car that's supposed to be in front in the extreme foreground is in the top layer. Make sure you have all the overlapping that you, you know, where everything's in place. The, you can actually drag the layers up and down to make sure that the extreme foreground is the top layer and the the car nearest the horizon line is at the bottom layer. So once you've done that, <coughs> um, you're going to now think about exporting the, the document. But before you do that, you're going to want to resize it. So I think I ended up with something like two inches or four inches tall. Um, but the trick is make sure that you change the DPI to 300. Think of it as deflating a balloon that you've drawn a picture on, how the picture gets very small but very sharp. It doesn't lose any detail. It gets very crisp. You, that'll only happen if you if you um, change the DPI before you um, 
before you export it. Now I'm playing around with selecting different areas and using gradients on the background. And eventually I'm going to have to take that background and I'm going to have to chop that up into layers too because the car needs to go down behind each mountain and then come up again larger because it, it got that much closer while it was out of view. And that'll help give the picture a three-dimensional space. So right now I'm just selecting different areas, adding gradients, um, making, the, um, making the landscape look the way I want. And later on I'm going to sort of chop it up and um, play around with getting it to actually be in different layers. I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Right now I'm just selecting an area and creating gradients. Um, if you're going to consider atmospheric perspective, um, atmospheric perspective uh, kind of means that things, the colors will desaturate and sort of fade as they go off into the distance. You always put the brighter, more intense colors towards the foreground, and you make sure the colors look old. Um, faded as they get farther away. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do that. Um, if you put colors that are really, really bright in the foreground, it has the unintended result of making the entire composition look flat. So I'm playing around with the colors, playing around with the gradients, and um, and once I have the colors down then I'm going to have to make a new file um, of just the landscape, but with different layers. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let me just finish coloring it first. Um, so I'm trying to pick like the really bright green to go in the front, the kind of a yellow green. And then I'm picking a duller, more grayish green to go in the background. And then I'm playing around with the sky. And again, it's fun to, to just play around with selecting different areas and using gradients. And so I'm just going to take a look at how the overall picture looks. Um, if I now notice that I uncheck that only layers that start with E, if you don't uncheck that, you can't export any of the layers. So now it's going to export as a zip file, and you're going to need to extract um, the zip file. You're going to need to extract the, the, the different PNGs from the zip file. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually playing around with creating physical separate layers with the extreme foreground, foreground, middle ground, and background. So actually I'm going to open up this same document four times. I'm going to um, erase parts of it and I'm going to stretch down other parts of it. So in this case I only want to preserve the foreground so I got rid of the extreme foreground and the background but then I'm going to take that foreground and I'm going to um, edit transform and I'm going to stretch it out. So um, when I put the extreme foreground in front of it, it's going to actually have physically separate layers, which means that I can have the car go down behind the mountain and out of view and then come back up into view later. So it's actually like I'm t by using layers, I'm creating a three dimensional landscape within, within what is actually a two-dimensional picture plane. This is not 3D animation, it's 2D animation, but I'm creating an imaginary three-dimensional world because each layer of the landscape is in a is in an actual different layer in the in the Photoshop file. So I now have my extreme foreground, I've got my foreground, and now I'm going to Um, do my middle ground. And again, I'm going to erase, I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to start erasing everything in back of it. And then I'm going to put, put it in a new file, stretch it out. And see, I'm layering the different extreme foreground and foreground on top of it. I'm going to open up the same file again. 
And this time I'm erasing the very background with the horizon line and the sky. I'll take this one, I'll put it into that layered document, and I'll drag that layer to the back. And then I'll nestle it in back of the, the previous one. I may need to adjust the size a little bit by hitting Edit Transform Scale. And so I'm just, you see, I'm just... Uh, rearranging the layers by pulling them up and down and um, I decided that the sky also needed to have its own layer so I add an additional layer of the sky and then I have to resize the whole thing um, what I ended up doing was I ended up going to the wick editor and checking on what size the larger um, HD animation was and I made a I created a canvas that size so you'll see how I do that in a minute I actually toggle back and forth between the um the wick editor and photopia and try and make the entire background the correct dimensions um, because what happens is if you go into the wick editor and you haven't resized everything um, you'll have all these giant files, and you'll have to resize each one in the Wick editor, and it may not look like it goes together. It may not look right. So here I am. I'm exporting my layers, and I think I actually forgot to resize them, so I have to actually go back and do that. They're going to be too big for the Wick editor. If you go into the Wick editor, you're going to start pulling in these files, and they'll just be too big. So I'm exporting the layers. It's taking a while to download. There they go, they've downloaded. And now I can see them in my, down I've got to extract them from the zip file and I can see them in my downloads. And then when I try and go into the Wick editor, that's when I realize they're too big and I have to go back and resize them. You can see how the different layers, there's like five different layers there. So here I am in the Wick editor and here's where I realize I messed up. So I'm creating this, um, car in a landscape project and I start pulling in these assets and look what happens I, I just this, everything's gigantic so I now have to go back to the WIC editor and I'm going to create a new document and look how I go back to the WIC editor and I'm actually taking the exact dimensions of the WIC editor screen and creating a document that size okay so now that I'm creating a document that size, I'm going to start opening up each layer and resizing it in that document. Um, I also forgot to resize the cars, so I'm going and doing that. I'm going to put the cars all together in a in a landscape and I'm, you know, in the direction and order that I want them to be in. And then I'm going to change the entire document to about two inches tall so that it's um, easier to manipulate the cars in the WIC editor because they'll be the right size, close to the right size. So the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to resize the cars separately because um, you're not going to know if they're the correct size in relation to each other. So you have to, I had to actually reassemble the entire document. It was a little bit of a waste of time. It would have been better if I had um, just resized it before I exported the PNGs, but I forgot to do that. So there I am, I'm putting them in the right order, then I resize it. And then I have to go back, take all my landscape files, put them in the right order, and resize them. Mm. 
Yeah, I sort of cropped it, got rid of the extra, and then I did image, image size, and I changed it to about two inches tall. And then I re-exported them. Export layers. I uncheck that top box. This is only layers that begin with the letter E. I, they're in a zip drive. I extracted them from the zip drive. Now I go into the Wick Editor. And I bring in all the elements of the landscape. So here's my sky. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going to add in the Wick Editor different layers. And what happens with the Wick Editor is you add a layer to the bottom and you can actually drag that layer to the top. So the idea is that the very bottom layer is going to be the sky. The second to bottom layer is going to be the background, etc. until you get to the extreme foreground. And I'm resizing them so they go off the screen slightly. So I get that sense of a real landscape with all the different layers. And then the cars actually have to be inserted in between those layers. So that background layer, I have to put a layer with very small cars in, um, in, um, in front of, on top of the layer that has the background in it. So it's going to be, the bottom layer is going to be the sky, the second to bottom layer is going to be that, that very far away road, and the third to bottom layer actually has to be the smallest car. So luckily I renamed the cars back car, uh, middle car, front car, because otherwise I would have had no idea which car was which or where it went. But the nice thing is these cars are already at the correct angle so that they're going to look right on the road. So now I'm in, I, I took the frames that had the landscape in them and I just pulled them out. I ended up pulling them out to about 50 frames long. But the ones that have the cars in them, I'm just copying, pasting the frame and moving the car along the road until it disappears from view. And then I have to insert another layer that's in between the middle ground and foreground. And I'm going to have to put another car in there, have it appear on the horizon, and just copy it, paste it, and move it along. I can also, if I want to, so now I'm going to add that other layer in, and i got to figure out where it goes, what layer it goes in between. Okay? And then I'm going to start adding in those frames and I can also if I want to in addition to copying pasting it and moving it I can actually also make it get slightly larger as it comes towards me because obviously objects as they come towards you get appear to be larger so I can actually resize it I'm copying it pasting it into a new frame moving it along slightly and also making it larger as it comes towards me. And I keep doing that until it disappears behind the hill that's in front of it. And that's something I wouldn't be able to do if the background were flat. If, I, if the background weren't made out of so many different layers, I wouldn't be able to make the car uh, disappear from view. If you find that you're accidentally moving the mountains and the landscape when you're trying to just move the car, you can go into the layer that the mountains are in and actually lock that layer. So the reason why elements of the landscape are disappearing right now is because I didn't pull out that last frame far enough. So I had to go back into the layers and pull out the, the different frames of the landscape so that I it went on for long enough and parts of the landscape didn't disappear. So now then I take the next car, um, the second from the front car, I add that in and I do the exact same thing. Um, it can get bigger as it comes towards me. It has to go along the route of the road. I have to copy and paste each frame and eventually it disappears behind the hill. And then when it reappears, it's the front car. And then I do the exact same process. So I think this video ended up having at least eight layers. 
because it had the sky, it had the back uh, hill, it had the car that was in front of the back hill, it had the next hill, it had the car that was in front of that hill, it had the next hill, it had the car that was in front of that hill, and it had the extreme foreground and the car that was also in front of that extreme foreground. So I think there were about eight layers all together in this animation, and I had to drag them up and down to get them in the right position. So this was sort of a a very painstaking surgical procedure to get everything to look right. Um, if you look at the final animation, there's a lot of stray marks that I hadn't gotten rid of in the original. Like maybe I erased around the car, but I left a lot of little marks. Um, if I were trying to make a more professional quality animation, I would have had to go back into Photopia, really use the magnifying glass, get in there, maybe put an extra background layer in back of the car temporarily so I could very carefully erase around it because those stray marks um, on the different uh, animation assets are very distracting. The other thing that I would have done if I'd had more time was I would have colored the car and given it some sort of sharp um, paint job but I didn't do that. So once I finally made that last car go off the edge of the page, I'm just playing it back to see how the whole thing looks. And the nice thing is it actually uh, can loop because the car comes from off the edge. Of the far It comes from over the mountain, and then it goes off the bottom edge of the page. So I can actually loop the video over and over again, which you're going to see here in the final product. Um, it actually loops about four times. But those I find those stray little dots and stuff in the final animation very distracting. Um, if I had more time, I would clean them up. That's the my only uh, criticism of my work.